I've been experimenting with Genmaicha latte recipes and I finally found the best one. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how you can make a delicious Genmaicha latte at home. So we've all heard of matcha lattes made with matcha powder and are now starting to hear about hojicha lattes made with hojicha powder. But one Japanese green tea that doesn't get much love in the latte department is genmaicha. Genmaicha is a popular type of Japanese green tea made by combining green tea leaves with toasted rice. This began as a way to make tea supplies last longer, but people soon fell in love with the warm toasted flavors. This tea is lower in caffeine, so it's perfect for the late afternoon or evening time. But how do we turn it into a latte? I followed a few Genmaicha latte recipes online and I found that the flavor is very diluted. I felt like I was drinking a cup of steamed milk rather than a Genmaicha latte. So why are the matcha lattes and hojicha lattes so much more flavorful? The answer is that they're made out of a powder. When green tea leaves are ground into a powder to make matcha tea and then mixed directly into water, the flavor is concentrated. This is because you're consuming the entire leaf rather than just an extraction. By the way, this also means that you're getting more of the health benefits from the tea leaves. But how do we compensate for this when we're making a genmaicha latte? I came up with a method that should be easy enough to try at home. First, take a tablespoon of genmaicha tea. I'm using the popular gyokuro genmaicha, which you can find at neoteas.com. Once you have a full tablespoon, put this into a Nutribullet and start blending. If you're doing a small amount like this at a time, the lighter leaves will fly to the top, but eventually they will all get blended. If you want to speed up the process, you can pulse the blender and give the leaves time to fall to the bottom. What you'll end up with is a coarse powder made from a mix of tea leaves and toasted rice. This will have much more relative surface area and in theory you'll be able to extract much more flavor from the leaves. Next, I'm going to take a teacup and a strainer. You'll want to go for a strainer like this that sinks pretty much to the bottom of the mug so you can infuse the tea with very little water. This is a mug I got as a gift from Mr. Sakamoto, a tea farmer we work with that produces the best gyokuro I've ever tasted. You can also find his tea on our website if you want to try it. Next, you'll want to pour in half a cup of hot water to brew the genmaicha powder. The best temperature for this is around 80 degrees Celsius or 175 degrees Fahrenheit. This will create an extremely strong infusion that may be a bit too intense to drink plain, but it will work perfectly in a latte. You can now let this tea brew for three minutes while you go on to the next step. So for the milk, I'm going to be using a milk frother that I found recently. You can use whatever you'd like, but just make sure that the milk you use is warm. Just pour in a quarter cup of oat milk or the milk of your choice and give it a nice froth. You'll see a nice foam will start to appear and then you're ready to add in your tea. After the tea is done brewing, you can pour it into the foam milk and give it another mix. Next, let's pour out the latte and have a taste. You'll see the latte has a good ratio of liquid to foam, and it also has a distinct yellow color to it, which separates it from a matcha latte, which would be green. The flavor of this latte is perfect. You get a sense of the toasted rice and the green tea, but it's not diluted or too strong. The nutty, toasted rice flavors are complemented perfectly by the milk, and the green tea leaves add some structure and a hint of bitterness in a good way. But how does it compare with a genmaicha latte recipe I found online? For this one, I used the same one tablespoon of leaves and half cup of water for the brewing, but I did not grind the leaves. After three minutes of brewing, I poured the tea into the foamed milk, mixed it up a bit, and then compared the two. The one on the right clearly has more flavor. It tastes distinctly like a genmaicha latte, while the other one just tastes like oat milk with a hint of green tea flavor. If you really want to experience the unique flavors of a genmaicha latte, I would recommend going for this method, not the standard brewed tea method. So while it may not be as strong as a matcha latte, the genmaicha latte is a nice addition to your latte recipes. It has a unique flavor that's very warm and comforting, which is perfect for a cold winter morning or afternoon. If you want to make your own genmaicha latte, you can find the perfect genmaicha tea at neoteas.com. We've traveled all around Japan, meeting with tea farmers and sampling dozens of different types of genmaicha teas. These are a small handful of our favorites and we'll ship them to you for free wherever you are in the world. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.